Hello, I'm Mitchell Boyer and welcome to AM Solar. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new lithium install. We just finished it up. Let's take a look inside. So this van is leaving us and shortly going over to Van Specialties up in Portland to have the inside built. Um, so we just finished up the electrical system and we built it with a very specific layout in mind. Uh, as you can see right here we have the lithium batteries. Uh, this is the solar charge controller, BMS, uh, control switches, and breaker area. Uh, we've got the MultiPlus 3000 inverter charger here. And then up above here we've got our temporary monitor setup. We just uh, set this up so that it would be easy to view until the final build was generated or put together. So we have two 300 amp hour lithium batteries here for a total of 600 amp hours at 12 volts. And we have a um, 30 amp charge controller, a uh, little 100 amp DC distribution block, and then we've got the 3000 volt amp multi-plus uh, quattro here in the system. So taking a little closer look at some of the components in the system. Here we have the AM Solar Lithium Control Module. This is kind of the heart of the system. It takes uh, signals from the whole system, uh, from the battery uh, management system. The BMS is what really controls the system based on the state of the cells in the batteries themselves. If the voltage of any cell gets too high or too low, it's going to cut out the uh, corresponding load or charging signal, which then gets sent to our board here. And the board then sends that signal over to the corresponding components. So in freezing conditions or if the system is over voltage, it shuts down charging sources like the solar charger, shuts down the inverter charger, and it'll also cut out the alternator charging. But if you have a situation where the batteries get too low, um, or if the batteries get overheated, then the loads are gonna shut down. And the loads will shut down um, all DC loads and AC loads, the inverter will also shut down. So uh, that's all happening between our lithium control module and the BMS, which is down here a little harder to see, but that's the Victron VE bus BMS. Um, so we also have the battery monitor shunt right over here. This is kind of the brain of the system as far as your uh, viewing information. This is going to supply the state of charge of the battery. It's counting every amp that goes in and out of those batteries and uh, also has a temperature sensor to correspond with the uh, battery SOC. We've got the fuse panel down here. That's for future use. This system hasn't really been built out yet, but that's going to be supplying the DC loads. And then we've also got our BP relay here. This actually cuts off solar charging, as I was saying before, using the lithium control module information that shuts off this relay, shutting off the solar. And then down here we also have that load relay, which uh, shuts off the loads if the batteries get too low. Uh, we also have switches, so we've got the breakers. This is the solar breaker, the house breaker, and then over here we've got the switches for the inverter and the master switch for the whole system there. We also have a solar switch. This is really handy if you're in a situation where you need to cycle power during the day to the charge controller. Maybe an update needs to be um, put into place or maybe it's um, prematurely gone into float and you want to put it back in bulk. You can easily do that just by flipping the switch off and then back on and that will cycle power uh, to the charger's PV side, the solar charger's PV side, which will uh, basically reset it, making it think it's a new day. Uh, that covers things pretty well. There are some fuses as well. This is going to be for the BMS components, uh, the color control. We also fuse individually, but that covers it pretty well. So over here we have the AC inlet. This is a 30 amp coach, so you can plug in your 30 amp cord here. We also put in a portable solar plug. This actually does not have solar panels on the roof, but has uh, intention for future use with a portable solar system. Plugs in right here. You can run it out into a field somewhere and uh, be catching sun that you're not sitting in with your RV. So here's a secondary alternator we installed. We installed a third belt system on this so that you can get um, a higher output at an idle. So it runs off of a new belt that mounts directly onto the uh, harmonic balancer or crankshaft pulley and uh, puts out power just to the house battery. So this applies um, three-stage charging customized to the lithium batteries only to the lithium batteries unless you need to boost the engine and 
start the engine using the lithium power. Then it joins both the systems together. So here is the brains of the alternator system. This is the Balmar regulator. This has already been pre-programmed for lithium and it has a three-stage uh, charger. It does 14.2 uh, bulk and absorption and then floats at 13.5. Uh, this also has a voltage sense. So this system is actually able to uh, sense the voltage of the battery and increase the voltage of the output so you don't have to worry about voltage drop uh, dramatically affecting your charge current. In most alternator systems, the, the weakest point is the charge voltage output. Because you're trying to charge your engine battery, the uh, output has to be limited to whatever the engine can take or the engine battery can take. And then the voltage that uh, is, or the power that's sent back drops quite a bit in voltage, which causes the output current to be limited to something like 10 to 30 amps in most cases when the battery, house battery is pretty full. In this case, when the house battery is at 90%, and the engine started, this will put out 14.2 volts at the engine battery, meaning that, or sorry, the house battery, meaning that this regulator may increase the alternator output to 14.6 if it needs to, and that will deliver, a, I think, around 190 amps to the engine or house battery system. So you might be wondering why the seat's off of this. We actually hide a lot of the components for the alternator system down here. Um, it's a nice place to put a fuse for the engine battery, which is actually located right under your feet as you drive. And we also put the isolator relay in here. We've added a boost button, which triggers the relay, as you might hear. And that actually powers the engine battery from the house battery. When you're stuck dead in the water, when you left your lights on, parked overnight, left your door open, um, you're going to have a hard time getting down the road if you can't start your engine. So with this boost button, even though we have a secondary alternator system that is completely isolated from the engine battery, we've still added an isolator, basically, that joins the two battery systems together uh, momentarily, allowing you to start the engine. Come on a little closer and you can take a look at the components here. We have the isolator relay, and then we also have the mega fuse over here. It's a 250 amp mega fuse. This is actually a 280 amp alternator, but it's pretty rare that you see them go over about 230 amps. And then right back here, We've got the momentary switch. This is uh, what saves you in a pinch. <laughs> so here's a diagram of our alternator system just to get a closer look at how that works. We've got the V4 board supplying an alternator signal when the ignition is supplied and all, all systems are a go. And that allows the alternator system, the Balmar regulator, to fire up and start charging when the engine's running. And uh, that is using a volt sense direct from the house battery to charge at the maximum output. And then we've also got that uh, momentary switch, which is just depicted by this wire. Uh, when you press that and the loads are allowed, meaning that the, the system, all systems are a go, once again, from the lithium batteries, that the boost will allow the uh, relay to close, allowing you to use some house power to start your engine. That's pretty much it. All right, thanks for joining us today. Safe travels, see you next time.